Welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for coming along and joining us for uh, this uh, Airborne Electromagnetics Workshop uh, as part of the Exploring for the Future program. So we're from Geoscience Australia. Exploring for the Future is our big kind of pre-competitive geoscience program. My name is Carl. I'm the science advisor for the program and I'll get the team and everybody who's in the workshop to introduce themselves in a moment. Uh, but I want to start by saying that uh, the program is truly national in scale and hence it's important for us to acknowledge country uh, where we work across all of Australia and we've prepared a little video for that, so I'll let that play. Geoscience Australia acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia and acknowledges their continuing connection to land, waters and community. We pay our respects to the people, the cultures and elders, past and present. At Geoscience Australia, we acknowledge that our mission to be the trusted source of Earth Sciences information is preceded by tens of thousands of years of knowledge gained by generations of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of that wisdom and of the lands, waters and skies where we work, live and learn. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are Australia's original mappers, miners and navigators. This is the heart of our work. And we have so much to learn from their many thousands of years of related knowledge. So uh, I think that AEM in terms of a data set is now starting to rival the, uh, the data sets of um, you know, uh, the gravity and magnetic coverages in terms of it, you know, its spread across Australia. And I just wanted to pause a little bit and kind of reflect on that, on that story. There's been huge investments by various CRCs and, and how the technique has developed. And there's a wonderful uh, keynote um, by uh, Ross Brody and Ann and others and Yusin. Uh, uh, on the Geoscience Australia website you can go to. But I remember uh, a workshop of Uncover in 2014 uh, that we went to and it was a kind of summit, it was, uh, it was in Adelaide. And there was a suggestion from a, a, a guy from Rio Tinto that we should fly the country at 20 kilometre spacing. And that kind of took everybody back a little bit. Um, uh, later that, uh, uh, straight after that, we had a workshop uh, on worrying about which methods should be used to map cover thickness, you know, this whole, you know, uncover challenge, and AEM certainly came to the fore of that. Uh, fast forward two years later, there was the Amira roadmap uh, for, for uncover, and I think it's the fifth top priority that came out of that was to actually acquire that uh, 20 kilometre spaced AEM to provide that backbone uh, of understanding for the country. And you know now we're, we, we've got this sort of coverage, and at Euston we'll go. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about this, but I think this is amazing. You know, in that period of time, uh, we've been able to achieve these things, and it's been largely driven on the back of, I suppose, mineral exploration, and that's what you know the majority of people here today are focused on mineral exploration. But the popularity of the technique and its usefulness is not only driven by that. Uh, it's, uh, we've been having a showcase over the last three days for the Exploring for the Future program and there have been talks which have also highlighted the benefits of AEM for groundwater uh, management as well as for energy applications. So even mapping the, the edges of distributions of salt in the Canning Basin by looking at, um, I suppose, disrupted um, near surface um, uh, stratigraphy uh, and in places even looking for um, uh, uh, for salt dye peers, uh, using these types of techniques and there's plans to do that further in places like the Officer Basin. So if you haven't uh, gone along to that, I'll provide a link to where, where you can go and access any of the talks uh, from the last three days. Uh, this is, I suppose, the last component of our domestic workshop and it's, a, and it's a technical thing. So not only do we want to tell you about the things that we're doing, but we also want to pass on the nitty gritty of how to do it and get your feedback in terms of how we might be able to improve. So the last thing that I want to focus on is that I think that data sets like this are really important, not just you know, for the individual projects that we do, but for the industry as a whole. Right? So Uncover, you know, one of the main reasons for it was map graphs like this, and this is Richard Shoddy and, uh, and others uh, have compiled them. But back in 1993, Australia had 23% of the world's um, global exploration expenditure. And we fell down to 8% in 2015. I mean, you know, we were kind of just on this big decline and the view was that 
well, we're, we're leaving the country because everywhere where you can kick a rock and find a deposit, that all the rocks have been kicked, right? So we need ways to be able to image the subsurface and AEM provides uh, that type of method. And then, since 2016, it's been climbing. And I think it's amazing, and I think it's a story of the success of pre-competitive geoscience and the, and the community uniting under programs like Uncover uh, in terms of, well, what is it that we need to be able to actually do? So, uh, since 2016, these are the tenements that uh, Geoscience Australia's pre-competitive program has, I suppose, underpinned exploration in these sorts of areas. And obviously, the state geological surveys have also got their programs, right? Uh, so, uh, I suppose a lot of that activity is underpinned by these types of data sets. But activity is one thing and, you know, success is another, right? But what's amazing is that we've only got uh, about 18% of the, uh, of the world's expenditure, and we've got 35% of the world's discoveries of tier one and tier two deposits. I mean, that's, that, that shows that you know, things are going well. Um, we've got, there were four tier one uh, discoveries around the world over the last five years, and two of them uh, were in Australia. Uh, so uh, my understanding is that those two are, are, are Julemai and Henny, right? And both have also been underpinned by pre-competitive geoscience. So I think what we're looking at today is hugely important. Um, and, uh, uh, but it's really important that we get to, to, to nitty gritty in terms of what, uh, what underpins these types of data sets uh, that are resulting in such success. So um, all that uh, is, you know, we, we, we don't do anything ourselves. We've got a whole list of collaborators, uh, so we want to acknowledge our partners in Australian Government, um, State and Territory uh, Geological Surveys and Departments, uh, the MINEX CRC we partner with uh, heavily and the NCRIS uh, facility, especially the NCI, where we, uh, you know, we, we generate a lot of the images from the AEM and the inversions uh, on that facility, and our collaborators in, in academia in Australia and across the world. So uh, this, is the, um, the, this is where to go if you want to find out, um, uh, get to recordings for, from the showcase. So ga.gov.au slash showcase, um, that should get you there, uh, and you'll find links. And without further ado, uh, I'm going to stop there, uh, and already three minutes over time, very bad start, um, and I'm going to hand it over to Klaus to provide a, uh, a reflection uh, from the Geological Survey of Western Australia.